Welcome back to Kids Fun Science. My name is Ken, and today I'm going to be talking about the ping pong ball blast off that I did back in May 24, 2017. So one of the great things about having a YouTube channel is all the great people you get to meet. And so I was contacted by uh, a couple guys from uh, Italy, uh, Matteo and Luca, um, and they were doing a project which they call Community Cannon, and mine is called the Ping Pong Blast Off, which is very generic, right? So mine is very like plain, simple for elementary kids, and they took it to a whole nother, nother level, which I just love. They were kind enough to uh, share their findings with me, and then um, I was really interested, so we did a Zoom call. Um, uh, fr from Italy to California and uh, they shared their findings with me which I found really incredible on what happens to the ping pong ball when it's falling they have a slow motion camera and I just hope you guys enjoy it um, because I really want to thank uh, that you guys helped me out here so we have Luca um, they're both from Polytech University of Milan and Matteo and I really do thank them <laughs> Hi, I'm Matteo from Polytechnico di Milano. And, uh, and I'm Luca, another student from Polytechnic of Milan. Mm -hmm. And uh, we worked uh, on uh, a problem from the International Physics Tournament, a competition that uh, um, every year challenges a university all over the world to solve physics problems. And so we work with uh, our university to solve the, the first problem of this edition. Uh, the title is Cumulative Canon, and um, it's based on a quite fancy phenomenon, let's say, <laughs> and a sim very simple experiment uh, that is based, uh, um, you can do it, then, no experiment, then you can do it at home, uh, very simple, with just a, a cap of water and a ping pong ball. Um, so, uh, maybe Luca, can you show the, the video? Yeah, it's interesting also because Ken uh, in his uh, YouTube channel had had done this before, had done uh, this particular experiment, uh, and uh, I've contacted him by mail to like uh, uh, know something from him, and uh, so that he, he could give us some advices on how to do uh, this experiment, and we work with that too, and this is what we we found out. So there are uh, two main problem about uh, um, the, the experiment to question that is uh, the main focus of our research. N now uh, we will present you the question and then we will show the video. So the question are how I may a ping pong ball jump using the setup shown in the video and what is the maximum fraction of the total kinetic energy that can be transferred to the ball. Now to understand better what we're speaking of this is the video. Yes, yeah, this is in the video. Okay, you take a, a little cap with water, you shake it, you do a little vortex, and then you place the ball in the center, you let it drop, and boom, it go straight up in the air after you let it fall. Uh, so we need to explain explain why this is happening and. Um, to try to estimate the maximum height that can be reached by the ball and the maximum fraction of air and energy that can be transferred to the ball. So, um, okay, this is uh, we, uh, our video we're trying. Ah, okay, so we start from uh, the free fall. What happened in during the free fall? The first thing we noticed is that when you let the ball and the the cap drop, the ball instantly uh, go inside the water, like it's, uh, it goes straight up under the water. And um, so the first uh, thing we ask ourselves was why? why? Why this is happening? Is this important for the experiment? Have something to do with what is happening? Why, why is the ball flying so high? Um, so um, during the free fall, there is no um, buoyant, buoyant force, uh, or the Archimedes force. So this is the first thing we thought. Why do we need to there is no that there isn't the Archimedes force? So if you can change uh, the slide. Uh, and uh, if I am talking, uh, 
like bad. I, I'm not. I, I didn't have a bad, uh, good English. So tell me if, if, if there is something can... that you can't understand. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 perfectly good. Uh, it's okay. Okay, I'm not uh, quite. Uh, I do not speak English often, so I <laughs> I hope I'm not saying good. Uh, well, you should hear my Italian. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Uh, okay, quiz. Um, this one, then, because the, I don't remember the PowerPoint. Okay. Maybe we can explain here the concept of the buoyancy force and why during the free fall there is no buoyancy force, yeah. actually. The, the main question that we asked ourselves after seeing the video was that uh, something was happening during the free fall. So we asked ourselves, what is happening during this free fall? And uh, what we can, we have found out is that if you, you take the cup with the water and the ping pong, and the ping pong ball inside it, and you like left it on a table so that it doesn't move, uh, there is the buoyancy force that keeps the ping pong ball above the water, like when you're playing in the pool with the uh, uh, inflatable and uh, they don't sink. We can demonstrate this, that this formula describes the buoyancy force if the container, the cup, does yeah, not. I so I was saying, um, this is the equation that you can use to describe the buoyancy force if the cup is standing still with no acceleration, like not free falling. And uh, this is the other equation that we can use to describe the system, the cup, the water, and the ball during the free fall. In this case, we can notice that there is one main difference and is the acceleration that, um, so, um, how to say, ah, with the minus su subtract, I don't know the English word for it. Um, yeah, let's anyway, say that. Anyway, the system of the reference of the ball uh, when it's free falling, the, there is uh, not just the the what's the, the weight force. force. Ah, the weight force and the buoyant force, but also the uh, inertial force that is represented by this a zero. And this. And this uh, acceleration, the inertial force subtract with the um, uh, weight force uh, and give a Archimedes for a buoyant force that is uh, zero. I in think in easy words, in easy words, is just like the cup is free falling, so the water is not pushed to the bottom of the cup, and uh, in order to this, there is no uh, a buoyancy force that the water applies to the ball. In fact, if we doesn't consider the um, friction of the air during the free fall, this acceleration here with whom the, the cap falls is equal to G, that is the um, uh, gravitational acceleration. So these terms here is likely very close to zero. And so the buoyancy force exerted on the ping pong ball is like null. Thanks to this, the ping pong ball can go under the water, thanks to the swirl that we do before dropping the cup, and remain under the water level for the, during the free fall. And so here uh, there is some clarification of the term we use where rho is the density of water and rho one is the density of the ping pong ball. And thanks to the lack of buoyancy force, the ball can sink easily underwater. And this is what happens when the system hits the ground. When we see in the video that when the cup hits the ground, the ping pong ball gets like shot very, very far up and we ask ourselves what's going on <laughs> in this instance of the experiment. And we came uh, uh, to conclude that there are different aspects, different factors that contribute to the um, velocity of the ping pong ball after the impact. And above these, there are the inelastic collision and the conservation of momentum. And maybe some vibrational phenomena due to the cup's wall elasticity, like when it uh, hits the ground, the wall like trembles a little bit. 
and also like compression waves, uh, shock waves into the water. And also the most important thing that we thought was the main aspect of this experiment, the return of the buoyant force and the Archimedes principle. Because we said before that during the free fall, the water is not pushed to the bottom of the cup, so there is no uh, virtually uh, buoyancy force. But when the cup hits the ground, the water is hardly pushed to the bottom of the cup and thanks to that, uh, uh, there is a buoyancy force greater than the one that you'll normally experience if you let like the cup standing still on a table. And this great force we thought was the main reason for the high velocity of the pink wall after the impact. And to create a model, we had to do a lot of approximation because the, um, this competition, the International Physical Tournament, uh, didn't ask us directly to uh, create a mathematical model for this, uh, um, for this phenomena. So we decided to, to create an approximated one just to make sure that our assumptions were correct and to see if all worked. So we assume like, for example, the container um, rigid, uh, the collision duration to be 0, 0 0.01 second and other things. I will not go further, it's very complicated and not Let's necessary to understand. For the model, <laughs> make it simple just because we didn't need something very complicated. So we want yeah. something to understand uh, into the phenomenon, something to work with, like where okay. we our idea and to have an order of mine. Let's also to compare the numbers, the result of the experiment for the velocity of the ping pong ball and the result of our model to see if they like something match or they are similar to each other. So this is the final formula. Uh, it's not easy, but can be uh, easily um, substituted by this number if you put like all the constants inside the equation. And what this tell us uh, is that the velocity after the impact of the ping pong ball is equal to four and five, eight times uh, greater than the velocity before the impact of the system falling. And the minus is because uh, we're talking about vectors and the vectors before the impact points down while the ping pong ball goes up. Yeah, so, Okay, okay. Uh, thanks to our model, once we found the velocity after the impact of the ping pong ball, we can uh, uh, substitute this velocity in another formula. And this formula right here, we find out on a paper of Mark Nagurka about aerodynamics effects. And um, substituting this velocity here, it gives us the high that the ping pong ball reaches. This was important because uh, in the laboratory where we made the experiment, the ceiling was not very high. So every time we shot the, the ping pong ball, we'll reach the, the ceiling and we were like, how, how can we measure the real height? And so we use this model in order to, uh, to simplify <laughs> the, the calculation for the high reach. And also these are like constants. I will not uh, go further for this one. There is no need to know about that. This is a scheme of uh, the velocity and the force exerted on the system. Yeah, I want to say something about the model because uh, um, here on the presentation, we were very, were very short on time. So we, like, we have to present our model very, very fast. But I want to tell you why we came up with this model of the Archimedes because uh, when we were observing the experiment, we noticed that um, the, the volume of water inside the, the cup wasn't re really important. Okay, so like if we take a cup of water and we put uh, like this, like 30 millimeter of water or 70 millimeter of water, it didn't change a lot. And this was strange because we thought, well, the initial uh, potential energy is very different because we have a greater mass of water, why this doesn't happen? But we noticed that the final height of the ball was greater 
when we do the uh, the swirl, uh, and we we notice in like we, with our eyes, uh, we we did the we did the swirl without the swirl, the, the swirl, <laughs> and we see that it was really different. And when we noticed that with the swirl, uh, the ball uh, um, sink uh, a lot, okay, during the free fall, because with the swirl it was really stuck inside the water. We thought maybe it's not important the water, but how much the the ball is inside the water, just that, like the Archimedes force. So how much is uh, volume is inside the water, and. Um, in fact, we came with this model. At the end, you see that the, the velocity after the impact depends only on the velocity before the impact. And the velocity before the impact depends only on the initial height because, because of the conservation of the energy. Like the there is no dependence on the mass of water that yeah, we use. The water. And so we thought, well, this model quite work. It would fit our uh, observation. And uh, and we like it, and <laughs> we we keep it, and uh, you know it also just uh, justify um, the high velocity because uh, four time the velocity before the impact is uh, really a lot <laughs> because the velocity after the impact is like uh, uh, ten uh, meter per second, and uh, with this model uh, we have uh, a prevision uh, uh, mm. uh, prevision that. That is uh, greater than this uh, velocity. With this model, we read like 20 meter per second the velocity after the impact. So if it's greater, it's okay because we can then say that for other effect like loss of energy or other thing that maybe we'll see later, it could uh, make sense. Okay, the model. Also, uh, after even numerically. Yeah. In the, in the end of this presentation, we also have a lot of videos showing uh, how fast we reach velocity for the ping pong ball. So that's the, the fun part. And yeah. <laughs> so about the variables of the experiment, uh, there are, uh, as I said before, it's like complex to analyze this experiment. There are a lot of variables, uh, like you can vary, you can consider the initial high from where you dropped the cap the volume of liquid used, the type of container, like a metal one, plastic one, rigid plastic one. Also the type of fluid, we thought to use oil or maybe some other things other than water. And also about the material on the floor, like if you want to drop the cup on wood or on a stone or things like that. We then decided to just vary the first three things because it was easier and because uh, the, the question asked us to use the setup um, shown in the video so that we didn't vary the, the rest of that. So this is some photos of our setup. Like we have here all the cups and containers we used, uh, some water bottles. Most of them broke during the impact. <laughs> Yeah, that's what's great about experimenting is just keep trying different things. Yeah, yeah we, had, we had a lot of fun. <laughs> that also was the fun part because you, you didn't know what to expect when you drop a container or a cup. So you were like, maybe it will jump higher, maybe not. Maybe it will just explode after the collision. Who knows? Yeah. And uh, this, is, uh, <laughs> this was the tripod that we used to make the recordings with a uh, uh, cell phone. And yep. the, the phone that we use, uh, we use uh, in slow-mo uh, videos at 240 frames per second, so that it was easier to analyze for us the velocity of the ball. And to analyze the velocity of the ball, uh, we use Tracker, that is a program that helps you um, calculate the velocity, the acceleration, the position, the height, whatever things you like of a moving object in a video. So by doing this, you take the video, you put on some references like the X as the, the Y as, and uh, also a length referent, reference. For example, we use this uh, piece of wood that we uh, created so that it was one meter long, and we use it to calculate the velocity and whatever we needed. Because I need a calibration of the program. Yeah. It's telling how much is a meter and so. 
Nice. Okay, this is a comparison of what we found out during the experiment and what was our model. Uh, the first, the first uh, thing to notice is how the variables influences the result of the experiment. We said before that uh, there is no dependence on the mass, the volume of water used. And as we can notice uh, for this particular cup, but also for the other container that we used, is that even increasing the, the water used during the experiment and maintaining the same initial high, the velocity of the ping pong ball would just remain quite constant during all the time, around seven meters per second. And this confirms our theory about our model uh, that says that there is no dependence on the mass. And for, uh, so we had used uh, the, the most funnier uh, cup was the, the bottle. Uh, the, Okay, you take a bottle, you cut it, and you let it drop with the water. And um, with the bottle, we can let them fall from very, uh, from very high. So we let them draw like from four meter or from uh, three meter, and we see very fast uh, launches. And uh, we have noticed uh, that uh, if you start to go really high with the initial height. Um, the velocity after the impact with the, will remain the same, more or less. So there's like an horizontal uh, asymptote on the um, graphic of initial, pot energy, initial potential energy and kinetic energy after the impact. And um, this is important because uh, it tells us that uh, you can't uh, um, go up to an infinity velocity of the ball. Uh, so uh, there is a maximum high, like it's a, it is asked on the, on the problem. And, um, but our model can't calculate this high because our model is like very approximative. So we take uh, uh, for the final maximum height, uh, the one we reached with the experiment. And um, that is like eight meter, if I remember. And another important thing that we want to confirm from our data, uh, that, that we confirmed from our data, is the importance of the swirl. Uh, as we said, uh, if you look up the velocity after the impact um, with this world and without this world, they are uh, quite different. Uh, you can see uh, even with other uh, container that uh, with, uh, with this world is higher, the velocity after the impact and so the, the height reached by the ball. Uh, confirming that uh, um, if the ball uh, have a greater sink more, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, if it sink more, uh, you go, uh, it will go higher. Ah, okay, yeah, there's, there's the video on the reality. Of that, that's the... one of the fun videos we talk about. Ah, yeah, this is why you... On the left, we have uh, an experiment where we drop a cup without doing the swirl first. We can see that the ping pong ball doesn't sink and uh, the cup also breaks with the impact of the ground. This is uh, probably due to the the impact compression waves that create in the water and they can't like, uh, uh, how to speak, they can't free their force, they can transfer their energy to the ping pong ball. So the, the walls just break out for this pressure inside the cup. While on the other hand, if we swirl the cup before dropping it, the ping pong ball will sink and all this energy that the water assumed by hitting the ground will transfer to the ping pong ball that is underwater and uh, make it jump. In this case, we notice another important thing as is that uh, this particular ping pong ball does not jump as high as other ping pong balls. This is because the diameter of the cuff that we use is very important. Uh, in fact, we can uh, see that if the diameter is Mm, comparable to the diameter of the ball, 
uh, the ping pong ball would not jump very high because there is no space uh, between the wall and the ping pong ball to let the water pass easily. And so it will just like uh, um, be slowed by this process. So to the question of the problem, as we said, uh, we, we have seen an asymptote, so we thought, okay, the maximum height is the maximum, uh, is correspond to the maximum velocity we see. And this, uh, we see the maximum velocity is 22 meters per second. And with the formula, we calculated uh, that it's like uh, 8.5 meter, quite high for a, <laughs> for a ball. And for if I remember well, this was, let, but it was dropped for a, per meter, you can see there is a stair <laughs> behind the, because we we climbed up on, uh, on a stair when I was we there, like, let it drop. <laughs> it was just like me, me and him dropping water bottles from a stair with people passing by and they just like, <laughs> what is happening <laughs> right here? I hope no one saw us from like the director. This is the video. This is low, yeah, this but you can see ping. how fast the ping pong ball starts. Yeah, yeah, it's like two frame, and it's already it's already way. That's crazy. Okay. And we reach the same velocity by letting it drop uh, we, from the from one meter, one no, uh, one and a half meter, like nice. the same, the, really quite the same velocity for the maximal fraction of the total kinetic energy that can be transferred. Uh, from our experiment, we found out that the best container for the request was the blue cup because it was plastic, but also rigid so that the wall would not like break or uh, maybe move like doing strange things. And uh, the maximal uh, fraction that we found was 29%. Uh, percent. This means that uh, the system before hitting the ground had like a hundred uh, joule kinetic energy and after the collision the ping pong ball that was uh, shot up had uh, a 29 joule kinetic energy. We Plus also... is, it, is it also because the base is um, uh, wider so it had more chance for the water? Yes, it is also because it's like narrow in the in the bottom but opens up very good so it also has this kind of shape that allows the water to go down and uh, shoot the ping pong ball very and cool. in fact the these two on the left uh, they are different container and they are very narrow so you can see that they have the lowest uh, uh, fraction of energy transferred and this one they are like the best one also, the, about this request, it is not like uh, uh, a limit in every case. It's, it very depends on the type of container that you use. We just tried this one, but maybe if you had like another cup at home that we didn't see and you use it, you may find a higher fraction or maybe a lower one. It very depends on the material and the shape of the container used. And this is the last thing. This was a very, another very interesting shot that we took where the bottle would flip <laughs> and then... Yeah, like we did a flip bottle challenge. <laughs> by dropping yeah, right. the bottle. <laughs> hey, people try to flip that all, all day long to get it land like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was harder. And also see like the pimple ball just disappear in a frame of the video on the left. Yeah, I didn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's that's quite it, I guess. Yeah, we have other graph uh, after the other uh, thing. This is, no, okay, there's more complicated data and graphs about it if, if you want to discuss. But that's that's the end of the official presentation. Oh, great! <laughs> awesome, guys. I appreciate it.